I'm Bill Gates, co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. AMA about COVID-19. Over the years I've had a chance to study diseases like influenza, Ebola, and now COVID-19, including how epidemics start, how to prevent them, and how to respond to them. The Gates Foundation has committed up to $100 million to help with the COVID-19 response around the world, as well as $5 million to support our home state of Washington. I'm joined remotely today by Dr. Trevor Mendel, who leads the Gates Foundation's global health work, and Dr. Niranjan Bose, my chief scientific advisor. Ask us anything about COVID-19 specifically or epidemics and pandemics more generally. Edit, thanks for all of the thoughtful questions. I have to sign off, but keep an eye on my blog and the Foundation's website for updates on our work over the coming days and weeks and keep washing those hands. What about the current crisis worries you the most? What gives you the most hope? The current phase has a lot of cases in rich countries. With the right actions including the testing and social distancing, which I call shutdown, within two to three months, the rich countries should have avoided high levels of infection. I worry about all the economic damage but even worse will be how this will affect the developing countries who cannot do the social distancing the same way as rich countries and whose hospital capacity is much lower. Hello Mr. Gates. As an educator, what is something I can do for my students, especially for my low-income students who don't have access to technology during this time? I have tried to send reassuring emails, including cat pictures but I worry about the educational impact, as well as the long-term impact to my students' well-being. Thank you. It is a huge problem that schools will likely be shut down for the next few months. I am impressed by the creative approaches that many teachers are coming up with to teach remotely. If you are a teacher reading this, thank you for the work you're doing, but I know that not everyone is set up to teach remotely. There are a lot of good online resources out there, including Khan Academy, Common Lit, Illustrative Mathematics, Zern, and Scholastic. Comcast and other internet connectivity providers are doing a special program to help with access. Microsoft and others are working on getting machines out but the supply chain is quite constrained. Unfortunately, low-income students will be hurt more by the situation than others so we need to help any way we can. Bill, I read the Imperial College COVID-19 response team report as well as this explanation in a historical context. Essentially, it says that by doing nothing, 4 million Americans die. Through the mitigation strategy, i.e. social distancing and flattening the curve, it says that 1.1 to 2 million Americans will die. However, it also says that the suppression strategy, or shutting everything down for 18 months, will lead to only a few thousand people dying. Do you agree with these numbers, and if so, is there any excuse for not immediately issuing a shelter-in-place order for the entire country? Fortunately, it appears the parameters used in that model were too negative. The experience in China is the most critical data we have. They did them shut down and were able to reduce the number of cases. They are testing widely so they see rebounds immediately and so far there has not been a lot. They avoided widespread infection. The imperial model does not match this experience. Models are only as good as the assumptions put into them. People are working on models that match what we are seeing more closely and they will become a key tool. A group called the Institute for Disease Modeling that I fund is one of the groups working with others on this. One tool that is helping us is looking at the genetics of the virus to understand the tree of infection. COVID-19 testing standards seem grossly unfair in favor of the rich and famous. Testing is happening for people like professional sports players, even those without any symptoms at all. I'm not talking about healthcare workers or people in essential jobs I'm talking about actors, actresses, sports players, and so on. On the flip side, the guidance from Kaiser in WA is that you must have a fever of 101.5 and either serious shortness of breath or a bad cough, and even then testing results take 5 days or more. How is it that even with something like COVID-19 testing, which the government is supposed to manage, the rich and famous are getting special treatment? 
Is there a big stash of tests that are reserved for people that matter? Isn't it hypocritical for everyone else to be told they need to look out for the common good and avoid demanding too much of the healthcare system, meanwhile the rich and famous get whatever they want when they want it? We need to democratize and scale the testing system by having a CDC website that people go to and enter their situation. Priority situations should get tested within 24 hours. This is very possible since many countries have done it. Healthcare workers, for example, should have priority. Elderly people should have priority. We will be able to catch up on the testing demand within a few weeks of getting the system in place. Without the system, we don't know what is missing, swabs, reagents, etc. Is there any chance that the 18-month timeline for the development of a vaccine can be shortened, and by how much? This is a great question. There are over six different efforts going on to make a vaccine. Some use a new approach called RNA which is unproven. We will have to build lots of manufacturing for the different approaches knowing that some of them will not work. We will need literally billions of vaccines to protect the world. Vaccines require testing to make sure they are safe and effective. Some vaccines like the flu don't for the elderly. The first vaccines we get will go to healthcare workers and critical workers. This could happen before 18 months if everything goes well but we and Fauci and others are being careful not to promise this when we are not sure. The work is going at full speed. I'd also like to ask the same thing, but with regards to the timeline for an effective treatment. A therapeutic could be available well before a vaccine. Ideally this would reduce the number of people who need intensive care including respirators. The foundation has organized a therapeutics accelerator to look at all the most promising ideas and bring all the capabilities of the industry into play. So I am hopeful something will come out of this. It could be an antiviral or antibodies or something else. One idea that is being explored is using the blood, plasma, from people who are recovered. This may have antibodies to protect people. If it works it would be the fastest way to protect healthcare workers and patients who have severe disease. Wow, thanks so much for the thoughtful and informative answer. I can't believe Bill Gates just answered my question. I just talked to Bill Gates. You just made my day week here. It's nice to hear something positive in this time of great uncertainty. I hope the Reddit community can spread the word about social distancing. Digital tools like this can help us stay in touch even though we are physically isolated. Bill, thank you for taking the time to do this today. I live in Seattle, like you, and it feels like our testing has not increased. Our number of confirmed cases is starting to lag behind other states. What do you think gives? Effective social distancing or lack of testing? The testing in the US is not organized yet. In the next few weeks, I hope the government fixes this by having a website you can go to to find out about home testing and kiosks. Things are a bit confused about this right now. In Seattle, the U of W is providing thousands of tests per day but no one is connected to a national tracking system. Whenever there is a positive test it should be seen to understand where the disease is and whether we need to strengthen the social distancing. South Korea did a great job on this including digital contact tracing. Hi Mr. Gates. In your opinion, after this pandemic comes to a close, however long that may be, what should be the first step we as a global community take so that we are better prepared for the next pandemic? The TED talk I did in 2015 talked about this. We need to have the ability to scale up diagnostics, drugs, and vaccines very rapidly. The technologies exist to do this well if the right investments are made. Countries can work together on this. We did create CEPI equals Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation which did some work on vaccines but that needs to be funded at a higher level to have the standby manufacturing capacity for the world. What do you think of the current approach the Netherlands is currently taking to combat this virus? They are not going to a full lockdown but rather try to spread it controllably in order to work towards herd immunity. The only model that is known to work is a serious social distancing effort, shut down. If you don't do this then the disease will spread to a high percentage of the population and your hospitals will be overloaded with cases. 
So this should be avoided despite the problems caused by the shutdown. If a country doesn't control its cases then other countries will prevent anyone from going into or coming out of that country. I think the Netherlands will end up doing what other countries are doing. Mr. Gates. Why do you think most world governments weren't prepared if you and other experts warned of such events such as this? No one could predict what the chance of a new virus emerging was. However, we did know it would happen at some point either with a flu or some other respiratory virus. There was almost no funding. The creation of CEPI which was funded by our foundation, Welcome, Norway, Japan, Germany, and the UK was a step but tiny compared to what should have happened. We prepare for possible wars and fires and now we have to have preparation for epidemics treated with the same seriousness. The good news is that our biological tools including new ways to make diagnostics, therapeutics and vaccines make it possible to have a strong response system for naturally caused epidemics. How is your foundation helping the current pandemic? Are you donating money, producing products for health workers? Our foundation is working with all the groups who make diagnostics, therapeutics and vaccines to make sure the right efforts are prioritized. We want to make sure all countries get access to these tools. We donated $100 million in February for a variety of things and we will be doing more. One priority is to make sure that there is enough manufacturing capacity for therapeutics and vaccines. We have other efforts like our education group working to make sure the online resources for students are as helpful as they can be. Thoughts on chloroquine slash hydroxychloroquine? There are a lot of therapeutic drugs being examined. This is one of many but it is not proven. If it works we will need to make sure the finite supplies are held for the patients who need it most. We have a study going on to figure this out. We also have a screening effort to look at all the ideas for therapeutics because the number being proposed is very large and only the most promising should be tried in patients. China was testing some things but now they have so few cases that the testing needs to move to other locations. Can you provide any estimates for how much of the world's population might become infected? This will vary a lot by country. Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore acted quickly and will have very few cases. Even China will stay at a low level of their population, less than 0.01%, so far. Thailand is another exemplar. Unfortunately in poorer countries doing social distancing is much harder. People live in close proximity and need to work to get their food so there could be countries where the virus will spread broadly. Given the economic impact of COVID-related social distancing, isolation, and quarantine, is your foundation committed to anything beyond direct medical intervention? For example, increasing funding to food banks, politically supporting bills that provide income slash sick leave for workers, etc. The foundation is focused on its area of expertise which is diagnostics, therapeutics and vaccines. There will be lots of opportunities to give to social service organizations including food banks and I am sure people will be generous about this. Once we know who tests positive we can figure out how to support them so they can stay isolated and still get the food and medicine they need. What is the projected amount of positive cases in one month? Three months? Six months? Any thoughts or theories as to what will happen in China when the lockdown is lifted? Is it possible that a second wave could come out? China is not reporting many rebounds. The number of cases in South Korea is going in the right direction. If people who test positive isolate themselves then the spread can be very low. The sooner people know they are infected the sooner they can isolate. Should there be a national shelter in place order? Why or why not? Most people can shelter in their home but for people whom that doesn't work for there should be a place for them to go. We are working on seeing if we can send test kits to people at home so they don't have to go out and so the tests get to the people who are the priority. The US still is not organized on testing. Can you explain briefly what most Americans can do to help other Americans in this moment of crisis? A big thing is to go along with the shutdown approach in your community so that the infection rate drops dramatically to let us go back to normal as soon as possible. 
Some people like healthcare workers will be doing heroic work and we need to support them. We do need to stay calm even though this is an unprecedented situation. Is there anything you can do to assist with ventilator production? There are a lot of efforts to do this. If we do social distancing, shut down, properly then the surge of cases won't be as overwhelming. Our foundation's expertise is in diagnostics, therapeutics and vaccines so we are not involved in the ventilator efforts but it could make a contribution to have more especially as the disease gets into developing countries including Africa. When will this all end? To bring it to small numbers globally we need a vaccine. Many rich countries will be able to keep the number of cases small, including the US, if they do the right things but developing countries will find it very difficult to stop the spread so a vaccine is critical. A group called Gavi helps buy vaccines for developing countries and they will play a key role once we have a vaccine being made in volume. How long will this go on? This will vary a lot by country. China is seeing very few cases now because their testing and shutdown was very effective. If a country does a good job with testing and shutdown then within 6 to 10 weeks they should see very few cases and be able to open back up. Won't a rebound happen after the shutdown ends? It depends on how you deal with people coming in from other countries and how strong the testing effort was. So far in China the amount of rebound being seen is very low. They are controlling people coming into the country very tightly. Hong Kong, Taiwan and Singapore have all done a good job on this. If we do it right the rebounds should be fairly small in numbers. What about the New York Times report that just came leaking a government document saying this will be 18 months with multiple waves? There are many models to look at what will happen. That article is based on a set of assumptions derived from influenza and it doesn't match what has happened in China or even South Korea. So we need to be humble about what we know but it does appear that social distancing with testing can get the cases down to low levels. What changes are we going to have to make to how businesses operate to maintain our economy while providing social distancing? The question of which businesses should keep going is tricky. Certainly the food supply and the health system. We still need water, electricity, and the internet. Supply chains for critical things need to be maintained. Countries are still figuring out what to keep running. Eventually, we will have some digital certificates to show who has recovered or been tested recently or when we have a vaccine who has received it. How is the economy likely to recover after all if this in your opinion? Yes eventually. The economic impact of the shutdown will be large but if it is done well, including the testing piece which I keep mentioning, eventually we can open back up. Thank you for watching. Tell me what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more. You are a legend.